Welcome to the Mindset Mentor. I'm Tanya Kolar, helping you live your best life. So, you know, it's really important these days to be selective of what we put out there um, about ourselves and what we showcase to the world. You know, perception is really everything. Of course, we want to be authentic, but we also want to be mindful of how others are perceiving us because we want to build lasting connections and relationships. And sometimes we're sort of misconstrued in our intentions. So professional advice is always great. We're going to talk about effective PR today and not only PR in terms of uh, you know business and clients in a professional sense but also for yourself we're gonna talk about self branding because every moment is an opportunity for us to showcase our best selves and as we know first impressions mean everything <laughs> and so what do we do when we haven't made a great first impression right so I'm going to welcome my guest today uh, Nikki Papayuwanu, who is a, uh, a PR consultant. She is the owner of Nikki Inc., which is a PR company that really, it's a boutique PR company that, that specializes in uh, helping clients to curate the right relationships to be the, at the right place at the right time, but also to build those stronger connections and networks and be those superstar clients. And by the way, you are the superstar in your own life. So you definitely want to stay tuned and listen to, to how you can really showcase your best self. So Nikki, it is an absolute pleasure having you here on the, on the Mindset Mentor today. Thank you so much. I'm so excited about this conversation. Yeah, I think it's really timely because um, I think more than ever, uh, there's so much emphasis on social media um, and there's so many ways for us to connect with people and, and connecting with people that don't know us. There's a different nuance. And I think there's certainly a way that we can be strategic about uh, putting ourselves in the best light. And I, and I always believe, of course, that maintaining your core truth and who you are is so integral. Um, and I, I first want to talk about what exactly is PR, because a lot of people think, well, that's just for the professionals and for, you know, the people who are celebrities. But what is PR? Well, you know, PR is public relations. And when you hire a PR firm or a PR consultant, you know, what they really work to do is curate, you know, whether it's a brand or whether it's you when you're the brand, the best possible version of you or the brand. And, you know, what we do at Nikki Inc. is kind of like, I tell everybody, we're, we're your best friend and your big sister. We're just right beside you to make sure you look your best, you act your best. And it's important that when you think about a publicist, you think about that person you wish you had in that really important moment that you may not have done really well. Yeah, you know what? I love that. It's like having somebody in your corner on your side. We all need that. Somebody rooting and cheering for us, right? Not not necessarily just there on the sidelines, but always there for us. Uh, someone who has your back where, you know, if you've got toilet paper on your shoe and you're about to give a talk, they can, they're going to tell you, right? They're not going to let you go up there. <laughs> Because it's interesting that so many people are actually afraid to, to say anything, right? Because they don't want to offend somebody. But sometimes you need that hard truth, you know? And, and listen, the toilet paper thing was just a really tiny little example. But we can look at that and, and you know, and how that impacts our, our world in other ways when we do things that are not putting us in the best possible light. So I, I love that. So I want to talk about, um, you know, Nikki Inc. It's a boutique PR company. Um, so how let's if you can give us some examples of, of how you help your clients shine, because I think there is nothing worse than uh, hiding our light, being um, afraid to showcase your best self. And I think it's so important to let everybody radiate that inner beauty within because we all have it. Sometimes we forget that spark is there. So how do you help your clients find that spark? Hey, so when I, when I meet with clients, um, I often ask them to describe themselves or describe their brand. Mm -hmm. And then I say, who do you admire? What brands do you admire? And they show me the ones that are out of reach, the ones that are doing what they perceive to be amazing. Mm -hmm. And then I say, okay, let's make a wish list now. And I think what I encourage people to do is dream a little bigger because I believe that, you know, the possibilities for anyone are infinite as long as their faith is there. Mm -hmm. And dream as big as you can within your comfort level. So we stretch their story a little bit 
And then when my, my team makes a press kit for someone in the beginning, the press kit's depressing because it's empty yeah. and nobody likes to look at it empty. Mm-hmm. And we start, you know, with our clients, we get clients interviewed in places we believe they're comfortable first. We never make them uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So, you know, radio and podcasts and local newspapers is where we start. And then as our clients show that they can do interviews and they're getting more comfortable and, and you know, confident on camera. So you'd be surprised by how many brilliant and very capable people crash on camera. And oh. it's good for us to see, you know, with our clients, um, some of them need orange juice before an interview. Other ones need their talking points printed in front of them before an interview. Mm-hmm. And we just we get to know them well enough so we can do what they need. We can be what our clients need. <laughs> I love that. You know, that's so true because everybody is different. And often we are sort of um, uh, oblivious to our little ind- idiosyncrasies, uh, how we operate, what stresses us out, what helps us to manage stress. Um, and it's interesting because it could be as simple as the, some of those things that you mentioned, um, like, you know, printing printing out uh, notes or a script, let's say. Um, and some people, they're better just flying off the... You you know, the cuff and not having that structure. So I think it's important. It helps to um, bring an understanding of yourself. And, and as I said, I think a lot of people are a little bit oblivious as to some of those things, right? So having a, another eye, <laughs> especially from some someone who is not related to us <laughs> or not in our close immediate circle, right, is helpful because again, our circle can also be a little bit oblivious to some of our, you know, uh, common ha- habits in our patterns right which also ties into our beliefs and our perceptions so I, I want to talk a little bit more uh, about perception because I believe that PR uh, certainly is uh, very much linked to perception uh, particularly how others perceive us so how does perception come into play for you and and your business oh that's a great question <laughs> so I mean for me I think it's a matter of before I leave the house, I know I'm representing all my clients, Mm -hmm. so I cannot disappoint them. It means that I take a little extra second to make sure I look good together because I know I could bump into anyone anywhere. Mm -hmm. And, And then that moment, I have to have everybody's elevator pitches ready and just talk about my clients. For my clients, I want to, I want to, and I always try and say to them, like, you don't get a remake, Mm -hmm. you know, any live interview, that's your only chance. So when, when there's an only chance coming up, like I have a client who's going to be on the social Mm -hmm. and I know what this client's weaknesses are. We will practice and we will be confident and calm. We will have a snack of protein before the interview. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. This is, you know, perception is almost like irrevocable. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you have to be intentional about how you deliver what you're telling the world. Yeah. And it's your only chance. You know, we all really only get one chance and not everyone's going to like you or receive you. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. It means you're authentic and it means you're distinct and that's fine too. Yeah, I mean, there's there's uh, so many different personality types out there. You can't please everybody. It's just not going to happen, right? You're just going to gel much better with some people, and some people, you know, it doesn't stick so much, right? And and as you say, that's okay. Um, but it is important to put your best self forward uh, to be prepared. You know, I love what you said about really understanding, you know, what's going to make that client uh, be be their best um, because you only have one chance. I, I remember recently uh, being at an event. And and there were uh, a few speakers. One of the speakers, you know, she was great. You know, I spoke to her before um, uh, she was up on the stage and she was lovely. She had a lot to share and a lot to offer. And she she was on the stage and she was using her uh, cell phone for her notes, right? So I saw her on the podium. She was scrolling up, right? And then she lost her 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 spot, and then it just went downhill from there because she was too focused on losing her spot and she couldn't sort of recover and get past that. So um, I thought, wow, that's a really interesting um, lesson. And for me, I was like, all right, I'm going to make sure that I always have my notes printed. <laughs> I have backup. 
an hour, I'm at least going to try if the cell phone would work. You know, always try something, I think, before is key. Um, you know, I used to be um, a host on, on uh, the shopping channel for, for many, many years selling product. And that was one of the golden rules. Don't ever try anything on live television that you haven't tried before because things can go very wrong. <laughs> and it's happened, right? And it's happened to me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and people just when you think they're not watching, they're watching. Mm -hmm. And you know, to that poor, poor lady who was on stage, and God knows why she didn't print her notes. Mm -hmm. You know, that could cost her, and that probably has costed her. You know, mm -hmm. that was the room she wanted to present to. She probably had very interesting things to say, and simply not printing her notes. Yeah, that was, that yeah. was a, um, a not invitation to reappear again. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, is that oh, we've all faced a situation in life where we've been caught off guard, we're unprepared, and it can be challenging, you know, so you know, I, I really felt for her and it's a tough situation to be in. But we can all recover, you know, from those things, if we know that um, it's a possibility in advance, if we start to think about, okay, so potentially, how can I how can I manage this situation <laughs> to uh, prevent it from happening, right? Um, and, it, you know, I think it's really important to to seek the help of a professional in the case of um, where you in a case like that, particularly if you have a really important event, you know, it's so helpful to get that expert advice because things that we just wouldn't normally think about. Right. So can we focus a little bit on uh, personal branding? Because, of course, you know, the listeners out there, many of them um, are uh, not necessarily out there, you know, doing speaking engagements or standing on a stage but you know the world is a stage every day is a stage in your own life and they are the superstars so how can we take a look at self-branding to ensure that again we're putting our best foot forward we're, we're projecting our best selves and the perception is strategic of what we want to portray but still again maintain that sense of originality and authenticity oh that's a brilliant question well I have, you know, I have a lot of respect for an HGTV designer named Tiffany Pratt. Mm -hmm. And Tiffany Pratt has bright pink hair and she has a look that is so distinct and it translates into all of her assets. Mm -hmm. It is so consistent. If you go on her website, if you see her social handles, they are imbued with pink with a font that is so distinctly hers and it's beautiful. Everything is beautiful. There's another um, personal influencer who's 95, I think, Iris Apfel, who has white hair and big, thick glasses and a very distinct fashion sense. And she's known for it because she never stops. Mm -hmm. um, I would encourage people to think about their personal brand as think about the colors that suit you. Mm -hmm. Think about the shapes that suit you. I, I tell my clients that tailoring is your best friend. Mm -hmm. Nothing from the store has to fit you perfectly, but once it's tailored, it's your best outfit. You know, I talk a lot about tailoring. I talk a lot about my clients choosing the accessory they always wear. So whether it's uh, a watch, a smell for men, a watch and a smell and colors. Mm -hmm. I had a male realtor approach me and we, we threw out his closet. We started over again. And then he said he met his wife. Oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> To the rules we discussed you know oh. very fair skin he looked really good in navy blue and browns mm -hmm. he came up with a capsule collection i invited a stylist a smell a watch a hat his signature is um like a beret he always mm -hmm. wears it mm -hmm. so you know um you can think about your signature as colors you know there's um a spin instructor that i really admire who's always wearing neon and that's how i remember her and i follow her and i remember her and i mention her to people and when people think about personal branding it's like it's everything, including your car. Your car needs to be clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so true because it, and it's also obviously perception, right? Of having a clean car, you look organized, um, you know, you're trustworthy, there's confidence, right? But it's also for yourself, you know, having that ease and the peace of mind that comes with walking into a clean car or, you know, coming home to a clean home uh, where there's not that chaos and clutter because that translates into the chaos and clutter in our, in our mind. Absolutely. Um, I can tell you that I was renovating my house. We just moved into our house after a renovation. And while we had boxes everywhere, I was a little discombobulated. <laughs> I was like, 
oh, this is what people mean about the space impacting the mind. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, our, our homes are an extension of who we are, right? So, you know, and I always believe that, you know, if there's things in your environment that you don't love and maybe because somebody's given it to you, you're not obligated to put it out there, right? I know I've, I've felt that way in the past, uh, but now I just surround myself by the things that I love. If I don't like to look at it, then I don't want it around me because it affects my mood. So I've recognized that correlation and it's so important to empower ourselves. And that's exactly what I feel that, uh, you know, you, you do within your company is empower people, right? It's about, you know, being cognizant of your environment, what's going to help you to thrive and to shine and to really put yourself out there in a way uh, that is perceived well. You know, it's interesting that you talked about the, the image um, and clothing and colors and things like that. So how, how do you help people to uh, get out of their comfort zone, right? Because um, you, you mentioned about wearing colors that look good on you, but if the colors that look good are on you are different from the colors that you always wear, how can you help people sort of get beyond that? Oh, that's a great question. So um, I often take clients to Fitzroy Rentals in Toronto mm -hmm. and just play dress up and it's on a day that doesn't really matter and first we put on what the client wants to wear and then we put on what we think would look nice on the client mm -hmm. and it's really interesting when people get out of their heads and they look in the mirror and then their eyes light up and they're like wow i look great in this color mm -hmm. and uh sometimes i think it's just i can see somebody almost at their greatest potential mm -hmm. and i don't see limitations so when i take somebody shopping at first they fight me and then when they see how good they look in what we're suggesting, everyone everyone tends to slowly come this way. Mm -hmm. I find that a lot of people are fighting an inner story of not being worthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Worthy of looking so good. Yeah, it's a big story. You know, I think a lot of people do suffer from that. And it's just, again, what we're familiar with. It's that comfortable pattern. And um, it's it's they're, they're afraid of change, essentially, right? Because our image is, and our, I, oh, sorry, our identity is linked to our image, right? Uh, in many cases. So it can be a little bit challenging to switch that up. You know, and I know for myself, I mean, listen, I love black. I mean, that's, it's just a color that I love to wear or a non-color color that I love to wear. Um, but it's interesting. And, and then there was one time, that's it. I just, I just wore black and white pretty much. Um, and now I've, I've, uh, expanded into several different colors and what and it took me a little while to transition I fought it I did not want to you know incorporate color um, but it was interesting because every time I wear a color that's when I get all the compliments right there is and and, and another thing um, you know in terms of perception which I'm sure you know Nikki is that you're you're perceived to be uh, friendlier when you wear color Right. So if that's important in what you do every day or, you know, you like people, you know, to come up to you and it's kind of it's something to maybe think about. Oh, absolutely. You know, so you said something really important. People compliment you when you're wearing color. And mm -hmm. I often tell people just to take a selfie when somebody compliments you in that color and then start a library on your phone just of the colors that suit you or the clothes that suit you. And then anything that you don't get commented on, throw it out. Anything that people say looks amazing on you, keep on one side of your closet. That's the stuff you wear. And wow. you feel good. Yeah, I love that. What a great tip. See, you know, I, I as you as you were talking, I, that's something I never would have thought of, right? So these are the benefits of having a professional PR consultant <laughs> help you out with your image, with your life, because it just makes life a whole lot better when we are, are feeling our best. Um, and that's our goal here on The Mindset Mentor is to have you living your best life. We're going to take a short break here on Saga 960, and we will be back with PR consultant and owner of Nikki Inc., Nikki Papayuwanu. Uh, um, I got that right. I, you know, and that's a thing. I think uh, it's important that um, when we meet people, um, always try to remember their name and, and pronounce it correctly. So I'm sorry that I, I fumbled there a little bit. I did my best. Um, uh, Nikki Papayuwanu. Uh, but I think it's important because it makes people feel really good, right? Um, when you say their name, especially especially when you say it correctly, <laughs> right? It's building those, those um, great connections in the future. So stay with us and we're going to continue the conversation here on The Mindset Mentor.
Hey there, welcome back to the Mindset Mentor. I'm Tanya Kolar, helping you live your best life. Today we are talking about PR, effective PR, how that can help you to shine, uh, to let that beautiful radiance out, to help you find that inner spark. We all have it. Yes, yes, I'm talking about you. You have that inner spark. Sometimes we forget. And, you know, seeking the advice of a professional PR consultant can really help shed a light on, you know, some of your uh, beliefs and sometimes insecurities so that when you are presenting yourself out there in any situation, whether that's on a stage or in business or in your just personal life, you know, you always want to put your best foot forward. Those first impressions are really integral. Uh, sometimes we don't make the best first impressions. So we're going to talk about, you know, how to course correct, <laughs> you know, in those circumstances. And we're going to continue the conversation with my guest, Nikki Papayuwayu. You I keep on uh, getting this one a little bit tricky, but I'm going to get it right this time. Nikki Papayuwanu. Uh, we talked earlier about how important it is um, about pronunciation and names, and I do think it's important. And I think that when someone pronounces your name incorrectly, you know, you should let them know because it's linked and tied to your self-worth. Sometimes we let things go. Um, but I think it's important. What are your thoughts on that, Nikki? Absolutely. I mean, I give people the grace and and I have an ethnic last name, so I understand, but you know, a person can make a mistake once or twice, but then mm -hmm. like the third time, if a person says your name correctly, it's just, it's respect. Yeah. And to make an effort, right? Uh, I think um, it's really important sometimes if you if you don't catch somebody's name correctly, or if it's not a common name that's familiar to you, you know, ask them how to spell it. You know, I've done that in other cases sometimes. And so it's, it, it's when you get the spelling of it, it's much easier to pronounce it, right? And to help you to get it right, right? So thank you for your patience, Nikki. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I love that. Um, so you've provided us with some great tips. So I want to continue and, and talk about social media and how we're presenting ourselves on social media. Uh, what should we put out there? And also, what should we not put out there? Because I think that... Um, you know, PR works both ways. You can have some excellent PR, right? That's that's really helping you, but you can also put some stuff out there which becomes negative press, negative PR, which we definitely don't want that, but it happens and we want to sort of prevent it before we get into into that stage. It's a lot easier uh to prevent it than to correct it, right? Absolutely. Uh you know, I always tell people and I mean right now video is everything. Images mm -hmm. no longer work on social media. Mm -hmm. So video with audio is powerful. Um, I know it takes a lot more work for all of us to produce all these videos. So I don't say that lightly. You know, people uh, respond to videos. Um, on social media, you also have to ask yourself if what you're saying is something you'd regret. So never do anything in the heat of the moment. Mm -hmm. Schedule your content. And always look at your analytics. Your analytics will tell you what people appreciate from you and what they don't appreciate from you just by simple views. So, so I'll give you an example. We work with a naturopath and she had a lot of phenomenal content. One day we posted information she put together about iron mm -hmm. and she had 20,000 views. And I'm talking 20,000 views when normally we'd have 2,000 views. Wow. So we all did a pause reestablish the content moving forward. So people showed us what they wanted more of, and we did a course correct and gave people more of what they wanted. Uh, at the same time, you never want to put a fight on social media. You might be in a fight with somebody for some reason, and you think that's a terrible business brand person, human. Don't put that on Instagram. Don't put that on TikTok. Tell your friends if you need to tell someone, don't put on, don't put that on a social platform. Yeah. And if you be vocal about something, you be prepared to speak to that in the future. Mm, yeah, interesting. Uh, I've seen uh, a few rants, um, you know, with friends on on social media, and I agree with you. Maybe that's not the best place to voice, you know, your your um, you know unhappiness. Let's say <laughs> in whatever situation that is. Uh, you know, because, you know, how we handle one thing is kind of how we handle everything in life, right? And so, again, it's our opportunity uh, to take a look at what we're showcasing and, and also to kind of shed a light into some of our thoughts and our patterns and our behaviors that are not really serving us, right? And, I and, and you know, having a rant online is certainly not serving anybody. Uh, maybe you feel good in the moment, but I think it kind of catches up to you. You go, oh, I shouldn't have done that, right? You know, we've all said it 
you know, or done something that, it, you know, we were not really uh, too pleased about and we wish we didn't do it. And that's not a good feeling to have, right? So I think that's the same thing with those rants. Um, so let's put some good content out there. So you talked about videos um, and, you know, there's so many videos out there of people dancing and, you know, having fun, which I think is great, but, you know, that's not for everybody. You know, I mean, I don't necessarily want to put videos of me dancing online at all. You know, I like to give information. Uh, so where's the balance and how can we, how can we, you know, utilize social media effectively in those, in those terms? That's a great question. Well, I think there are trends and a lot of people want to hop on trends because they're comfortable just dancing and being silly. And if you don't want to jump on one of those trends, I mean, people are really, especially on TikTok, they're mm -hmm. open to like 30 minutes of wisdom, sorry, 30 seconds of wisdom. Mm -hmm. So if you can do something short and you just put words and you layer your words and you're a person talking, there's a lot of people that have a coffee cup. Some other people pause, they're in their car and they're giving, you know, words of wisdom that also works as long as you're consistent with it. And you keep mm -hmm. keep your videos short, sweet, to the point. Yeah. Okay. So when you say consistent, what does that mean? How consistent is consistent? Well, consistent <laughs> is like daily posting. So mm -hmm. we had a client grow to hundreds of thousands of followers on TikTok. And we told him he had to do daily videos. He did daily videos and his account exploded. Hmm. So if you have enough to say and you could record videos and post them every day, it's pretty powerful. Mm. So, so consistency, you said about being in a car, or having a coffee cup. So can you have that same environment oh, and do the yeah. same video so, every day? Yeah, that's a good point. So it could be like, if it's you, for example, and you're in your car, you'd be like, Hey guys, I just parked. I want to share this wisdom with you. So there could be a theme to your moment. Another one, there's, you know, this mom with a mop on TikTok. And every time she mops, she stops, she says something. I follow her and that's I don't know cute. why I'm always expecting the mop. Um, <laughs> Some people always do it in the same grand chair. Mm -hmm. So you could do that, but always remember, you know, change your shirt. If you're batch recording and you're doing all your videos on the same day, change your mm -hmm. lipstick, change your shirt, different accessories, keep going. Yes. Yes, that's great advice. That, yeah, because I think it just provides some variety and keeps things interesting uh, for for uh, the viewer, right? The listener or the viewer. So yeah, these are really great tips. Um, you know, I'm loving this because social media right now, you know, it's a thing. I think um, if you're not on social media, I mean, you are limiting your um your access right to so many people that you if you if you you have the intention of sharing your message right or building your brand or building your business which all ties into your brand um so i think it's important to you know maybe be on social media to some degree what are your thoughts on, on that it's a great question so i think it's a necessary beast mm -hmm. um it's not the most fun we're all gonna have mm -hmm. but you know being present on social media and letting people see a little bit more behind the scenes i think is important you know when you post a story on instagram it nudges people and it reminds people to come back and look at your profile mm -hmm. so a story every morning is pretty powerful because people who might not be scrolling your profile will scroll your profile because of stories mm -hmm. so you know, um, I tell a lot of my clients, you know, you're at the gym every morning. That's a moment you can share. You don't just share the moment when you're made up and perfect. You can share the moment behind the scenes where you don't want to do another rep, but you're showing the gym mat, the water, and you have a little bit of a thought, you know, 6 a.m. push. People want to see that. They want to know what it what it makes, what makes you you. Yeah, you know, and also just to be real. Um, and I think a that's one of the, the deterrents uh, in people's minds of actually being on social media or having a large pre presence is because they don't believe that people are being authentic, um, you know, and they put an image that is not necessarily who they are. That's why it's kind of fun when you just do a video uh, that's in the moment, doesn't have to be perfect. When you mess up or you mess up someone's name <laughs> like I did, you just keep on going, right? Instead of going back and editing something or changing it or doing another video, just be real because we're all human and we're nobody's perfect. Um, you know, if you're filming a video on your trip, I think it's great just to keep it in there, right? <laughs> because it's kind of like, okay. hey, it's human. It's that human element. I think we connect with the that level of humanity. You know, Tanya, like, wait, Tanya, Tanya, see, I'm practicing this. And it's terrible because I have a cousin who has the other name that I keep calling you. So Tanya, I was at a conference and I had to give a speech and it was recent and I made a mistake. 
I showed up wearing an outfit that I would wear to a marketing conference, to mm-hmm. a pharma conference. It was not good. And so basically I learned a lesson. Everybody in the room was wearing a navy blue suit or a black suit. Mm-hmm. And I was wearing a blazer, a silk top. And that's something you'd wear to a marketing or PR conference. Mm-hmm. And in that moment, I had to do a regroup because I'd be on stage in front of all of these people. So I had to make a little joke about it and promise to show up in better attire next time. And, you know, something I can tell everybody listening is that you're going to have these moments where it doesn't really work out to the best of your, you know, efforts, Mm -hmm. but it's okay. Just learn, just take note next time, have your Navy suit ready, wear it when you must. Yeah, this is, that's great. I love it. Even, even the professionals, you know, have their moments of, whoa, okay, just learned a lesson here, but that's great that you called it out. You recognized it and you went with it and you, and you made fun of it and you were, and and people will value that, um, you know, because they're all probably sitting there judging it, (laughs) right? Or maybe not, but if you think they are, Hey, why, why not? But sometimes I think that we can obviously be our own worst critics. So I think that's important to sometimes recognize recognize that and and not beat ourselves up so much and just kind of have fun with it. You know, I think in life uh, we can get very serious and when things happen, we don't, we don't uh, take the, the approach that it was okay. We take the approach of, oh my gosh, what just happened? Why did I do this? How could this happen to me? Right? (laughs) So it's good to just give yourself a break. Listen, you know, you're human. Everybody is human. So there's moments in life. There's many moments in life actually, right? If we think about it, that we're just not going to get it right. (laughs) But I think it's helpful to uh, put some strategies in place and some key principles to uh, ensure that most of the time we're going to get things right or close to right, right? Um, And so in terms of the, let's say, negative press that we can uh, garner for whatever reasons, I'm sure your clients have had... um, you know, some, some issues. Uh, let's talk about crisis management. Um, you know, how do you, how do you combat some of the issues that come up with your clients? Oh, that's a, that's a wonderful question. So I don't do a lot of crisis PR, although I was told that I should, because I stay very calm when things go very bad. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I encourage my clients to not get vocal when they're being attacked. Mm, sometimes mm. you just have to be attacked if there's something you did and people feel like attacking you you just have to take a minute Mm -hmm. maybe it's when you don't comment for a few days and then you know there's it's important to craft a message that's not defensive if you screwed up let's talk about the fact that you screwed up it's Mm -hmm. okay you're human but negating or defending yourself and saying i didn't screw up doesn't help you you have to acknowledge and own that you messed up And I believe it's important at that point to once again, step away from social media and Mm. let things pass. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not good to go on a spiral, a spiral that involves engaging a lot of ego and wine and just... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's a, oh, such great advice. It's so true. When the ego takes over, we want to respond immediately. And it's like, how dare you say that or think that of me? Uh, and then it's a back and forth, right? And yeah, and I mean, if you're on social media and you've done something, it could be a back and forth with thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. So yeah, it's uh, that, that advice to remain calm uh, and to step back just for a little bit of time so that we can start to think clearly is excellent advice um, because those snap judgments um, and responses can sometimes lead to to more trouble right yes Um, yes I have a software I pay for Mm -hmm. and it's a listening software and it helps us gauge conversations that are happening before they're viral and very helpful let me tell you interesting so can you give us an example of that Yes. Um, so I had a client make a large donation and, and it was a donation that was a little bit obscure. It wasn't clear. And then, you know, somebody posted and said, what a spoiled rich kid, nothing she does has any goodness behind it. And then how, you know, totally just someone's opinion, you know, Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. started agreeing with him. And, you know, in that moment, it was good for us to just issue a statement clearly showing where her donation went. Mm. And that it was in fact completely philanthropic, just giving, and she didn't want a lot of positive publicity for it, but where people felt a secret was being kept, some negative PR could come of it. So, Mm. you know, sometimes it's important to listen, 
and have a positive or negative sentiment associated with our clients. And this is what you pay for with PR. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have the ability to listen and get in front of some things. And uh, I think clients appreciate this. <laughs> that is super cool. I think, you know, listening one of, is one of the um, underrated skills, right? Listening can really shed a light on um, a lot, especially um, on how other people um, are feeling to what you're saying, right? Um, and it's just, it's it's really great, I think, to, to you know, pay attention, um, you know, in terms of listening. So we're going to take a break and we're going to listen to, to more PR advice with my special guest who is the owner of Nikki Inc., which is a a boutique PR company. Uh, Her name is Nikki Papayuanu, and we're going to take a break, and we'll be back here on Saga 960, helping you to live your best life. And we are back here on Saga 960. I'm Tanya Kolar. You're listening to the Mindset Mentor Show. We are helping you to live your best life. And of course, uh, that is my mission. Uh, And I can only do that with some amazing guests like my guest today, uh, Nikki Papayuwanu, who is the owner of Nikki Inc. It is a boutique PR firm that helps clients to really shine, to bring out that superstar and to you know, uh, really be their best selves and and the perception of what they're putting out there. I think, Nikki, um, as we continue the conversation, uh, it's so important to, to, to network, to build lasting connections, uh, that can help us down the road and in the present moment. So let's talk about networking because I think some people think they're either really good at it or they're really bad at it. They don't know how to do it. How do we network effectively? (laughs) Oh, what a great question. Well, you know, there's two things I want to say here. It's important for people to know their elevator pitch because in a moment of networking, that's just a really tight way to describe what you do. So I'll give you an example of a bad elevator pitch. Mm -hmm. Um, I own um, a pancake organization that's passed down from my family and it tastes really great and everybody wants my pancakes versus I own a pancake organization. The pancakes are made with locally sourced ingredients made in Ontario, uh, no preservatives, no additives with a wholesome ingredient list passed down through generations available online, made to order, built to last. Oh, whoa, that's good. Yeah. Just you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because kind of right away, I uh, I noticed like a little call to action there, right? So now I know where to get those pancakes because the first, the first time around, I had no idea where those pancakes are, right? <laughs> you know, I might, even if I was hungry, I'm like, hey, this is great, but where do I get these pancakes? <laughs> and now I know how good they are for me nutritionally, right? Um, and they're locally sourced and that can mean a lot to people, right? Especially, I think, today where, there is so much option. Uh, you know, we need to stand out from others. And that's a great way of standing out. Okay. So this is really great. Let's talk more about networking. Okay, um, so, go ahead. Yes. You have your elevator pitch and then you're at, you're in a room of people and you're like, mm-hmm. Oh God, what do I do? Two years? I didn't do this. And what I always advise my clients to do is, you know, approach people, uh, introduce yourself and say, oh, so what's your story? What do you do? And when you say to somebody, what's your story, even if they don't have a great elevator pitch, they're inclined to tell you a little bit more about themselves Mm -hmm. and um, where you think you're not getting anything out of it. And you start first by asking somebody what their story is. The question you want to ask yourself is how can I help this person? Mm. And if you're in that mentality and you find a way to be of service to people, people won't forget you because you've thought about how to help them. And by sheer fact of nothing else being required of you. And if this is the basic way to go network, since we haven't done it in two years, you go into a room and you find people who might be standing on the outward sides of the walls because those are super shy people. So Mm. maybe you start with them and you say, hey, um, this is my name. What's your name? What's your story? And what brings you here today? Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's value there because some people might be like, oh, I'm just the coach check lady and that's okay. Now you know her. And um, to the other gentleman who's like, oh, I, I organized this whole thing. See, you met him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. You know, that's that's really interesting because I think that, um, you know, we have 
you know, sometimes gotten away from how we used to network or talk to people. So it's kind of getting uh, familiar again with people <laughs> in crowds because we've sort of been isolated for, for a little while. But, you know, it's important to ask those those open-ended questions, right? Um, so what's your story is great because someone can respond to that. You don't want to just ask, are you having a great time here tonight? Right. No. That's like a yes or no. And then the end of the conversation for someone who's shy. <laughs> right. So and I think, you know, what I've noticed, too, uh, certainly is that people really enjoy talking about themselves when they have the opportunity they, they want to share. So it's great to give people that moment. And and one thing I also want to point out, um, you know, it, the first time that I, that I met you, Nikki, I loved you immediately. And what I noticed about you uh, as an observation, interacting with several people that were you know in the room uh when we met that you always asked a question how can i help you what can i oh, do to help you yeah and i was like wow this woman is amazing she just wants to give back she's looking at you know how can i serve someone in this situation uh and i think that that's a game changer in life when you can you know sometimes take the focus away from what am i going to get in this conversation versus what can i give in this conversation uh, is I think it's important to always leave people with an impression of increase from any interaction that you have and certainly when I met you Nikki that that impression of increase was very evident so I love what you're doing and your mission <laughs> mm -hmm. well you know it's important to me that everybody understands how we're connected so, you know, I believe that we're all connected so much more than we think we are mm -hmm. the same way, you know, a person walks into a room laughing can eventually make everybody smile. Mm -hmm. um, when I met you, we were in a room where people were telling some hard, sad stories. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, all I wanted to do was support. How can I make people still feel good? Even though right now this is really sad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah with networking, I mean, it's not how many business cards you get. It's, you know, what did you leave? What did you leave with in terms of tangible notes on who you can maybe help and connect with? Because for the simple reason of if a person is an entrepreneur and they're new and they really don't think a room can generate business for them, maybe they could think about giving positive Google reviews for the people they meet in the room. Mm -hmm. And then if you've given 10 one day when you're ready to ask for reviews, these 10 people haven't forgotten you. Mm, yeah, that's true. Uh, again, that, that's that, that strengthening of the bonds and the connections that you meet. You never know how, um, you know, your introduction to someone can help you down the road or vice versa, how you can help them. Uh, that's why it's so important to put yourself out there, to get out there, you know, uh, say yes to events. You know, when things show up in your life, you want to say yes, take action. Don't be afraid. You know, we got to stretch a little bit, I think, and get ourselves out of our comfort zone, especially given given the fact that we kind of have sometimes forgotten how to communicate with people uh, in the real world because we were, you know, sort of behind closed doors for so long. Uh, and so integrating back into society, uh, it's important to, to, you know, foster really good relationships. I think we certainly have all come to understand and hopefully understand the importance of relationships. And we all are uh, co collective, like we're, we're one, we're the same. And so it's so important to yeah, see what we can do to help others. 100%. Yes. <laughs> All right. So we do not have uh, much time left. So Nikki, how can people find you and get more information about you and your business? Well, entrepreneurs, we do hourly coaching sessions. Um, and you can find those at www.torontoprgency.com. And, you know, on there, reach out to us. You can follow me on Instagram at Nikki Inc. T.O. And I look forward to connecting with anybody who wants to understand more. I love it. Well, Nikki, I honor you for the work that you're doing and for helping people to, to really shine and to bring out that inner superstar. Um, and uh, thank you for being here on the Mindset Mentor and sharing some great tips and advice that sometimes we just wouldn't have even thought of unless we had the help of an expert. So thank you for being our expert today. Thank you so much for having me. I think you are phenomenal.
Oh, well, thank you. What a nice compliment that is. Well, listen, everybody, you are phenomenal as well. You heard it right here on the Mindset Mentor uh, with my special guest as well, Nikki Papayuanu. So check check it uh, out, her company um, online. Again, Nikki Inc. You can find her on social media. And let's continue living our best lives. It's happening right here. Let's do it.